I almost don't want to tell you the name of this town. I might reserve. <laughs> I'll put it in the bio, and if you find it, you find it. Because um, we need to go back, and we need to go back really soon. Because it like was tomorrow. fantastic. And then we watched over this this video, and we were like, oh, my golly gosh, what have we done? So we are going back to rectify our picking resale mistakes. Yeah. Um, Agreed. This shops, to be honest, it's, it normally has a couple of baggers in it, but I don't know what's happened in their new management or. Yeah, we've we've been to a few bits and pieces, but it's not. It would never have anything like this or, or kind of the magnitude of what we kind of had a look at. It's in a very small Somerset town, which I would describe as uh, reasonably affluent, um, but not like on the scales. So yeah. the prices are still quite good um, all around. And um, this is Menzo first, and Austin will you know do his fandango. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. This is a, a vintage L. L. Bean shirt, like a um a kind of safari style shirt. They used to go really reasonably well. Um, it's just not something really pick up very much. They, they I gave them twenty five thirty quid. Um, I think that was eight pounds. We sold a lot of fleeces from L. L. Bean in the past. They sell already quite nicely. Yeah, they sell for a fair, fair bit more as well, don't they? I call it default. Depop fodder though, it's not real eBay hard stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right. These were a pair of Ralph Lauren um, chinos in red, obviously in red. They're not green. Um, uh, basically, uh, to be honest with you, they, they go they go really really well. Um, you can get anything between kind of twenty five, thirty upwards for like fifty or sixty, depending on the color. Uh, new with tags. Um. To be honest, once again, it's one of those things that we don't pick up very often. They go quite quick, but it is more kind of that kind of... What would you say? Like, like I mean, red's quite a niche colour, isn't it? I do, like, enjoy putting it, picking up the corduroys. Um, the same trouser, but in corduroy. I think we've said that before about the shirts as well. Yeah, the hipsters buy those and that yeah. sort of stuff. Red's a very, like, countryman, affluent man um, colour, and I find the majority At least of that, down here it is. <laughs> yeah, and I find the majority of that kind of fodder people buy new. I they know do. it sounds silly, no, but I it's, agree with it's you. quite niche. If you, if you see the chinos in like a beige or kind of like even a black or, or a white sometimes they go pretty well but the kind of more funkier colors no i just don't uh, well yeah like i say i guess each, each to their own yeah we just passed a dax blazer dax does sell really well um i we just don't pick up it we don't pick it up it's not something we like to keep in our store or keep in stock um it, not, not because there's anything wrong with it it's just one of those brands that i'm just not we, yeah you get like accustomed to what brands you like and things like that it's, it's funny when i listen to people um on the on their videos or their stories or on instagram videos or whatever they are and i hear that people say oh i don't really pick that up it doesn't do well for me and I I think, I think, sometimes I think, what do you mean it doesn't do well for you? It does great for us. But I also get it now because there are things that people sell all day which we don't pick up. Yeah. So I think get, you get kind of, not set in your ways, but you you know what works for you. You also get like infused about selling things and some things you don't. And this is a Ratsu, which is hilarious because I, Austin said, if you sell the cardigan that we've already got in stock, then we need to go back and pick it up. And I was like, no, the cardigan won't sell quick. It's an anthropology brand and all that, you know, la la. And um, I sold the cardigan this morning for full asking price Where, um, going back how much was this though i, I think know. it was like oh, do you know what someone's gonna correct me because they've probably seen the tag i think it was between six and eight pound all right it so wasn't it's, cheap it's cheap a bit higher yeah we only paid it oh, we paid under three for the cardigan and that's all 35 it was a particularly nice piece that there was though that's why yes. i actually caught my eye that's a vintage uh Berghouse, um fleece it was it was actually quite nice um once again, I don't know, I can't remember the price off the top of my head, which is totally useless to Six you guys. Six pounds, I think it was. Six pounds. Then. And they go for about 25, 30, or they like. Once again, Depop, we're kind of, we're kind of, I don't know, we're kind of doing less on that, aren't we? We're focusing on it at the moment because. And when I say Depop, I don't mean it as a, we're doing less on Depop. I mean, we're doing less oh, Depop style we, items we like have, that vintage kind of. We, we have multiple accounts in multiple different, doing multiple different things. So, yeah, sometimes with the cross reference doesn't make sense to you. But the vintage As regards Depop, luxury, yes. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I should have said that. These were uh, Jay Lindbergh golf trousers, I think. I didn't get these. Austin did show me. They were newer tags. I didn't get them because they were ladies and they were a small size. Now they were like fifteen pound though. That goes that against oh yeah, but they're newer tags. That goes against all my rules because I'm not really one to care about sizes or genders, literally. But um, the Jay Lindbergh actually they sell the men's range in um, John Anthony, which is a southwest. Um, 
high end men's boutique. Kind of designer store, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and because of that, the prices do really well, but not it's all men's. And um, that was Dolan. That was an anthropology brand that we missed. Um, you get no signal in the shop either, so it's like one of that's those. That's actually yeah. You just made a really good point. That's actually you just why blew my eardrum. Sorry, if I blew your eardrum at home, I apologize, but I don't know what to say. Um, yeah, that's exactly what it was. I kept trying to check things on my phone, and it was it's like that the land the time forgot. You can't get any reception, so we lit in, even when we were back at the car, we couldn't check things. Um, but yeah, there's a load of like independent, I call them independent high end brands. So sort of niche independent, but they all need research into some degree, if that makes sense. Um, you can pick up the bread and butter stuff really easily, but if you need a little bit of extra, you know, zhuzh, zhuzh into it, then you need your phone, obviously. Yeah. And I think once again, even, even if you know a brand, a cardigan, for example, might sell totally different uh, at a totally different price to a pair of trousers. So this one we looked up, uh, Millie's of New York. I had found it before. I didn't realise Austin had found it. I'll put a comp up in a minute. It's one of those random, like, niche, high-end brands, but, like, maybe a dress retails for four fifty, five fifty, and we just left it sitting. Oh, hello. There's my friend. Oh, yeah, look. We're having a chat. Anyway, this is a Max Mara um, blazer, gold sort of uh, geometric print. If you follow any of my accounts, you know that we did pick this up. Um, it's got an interesting tie fastening. Um, it isn't silk, um, but it's got like a silk vibe to it, if that makes sense. It has, yeah. yeah. Tailored, um, size 14. It's from Max Mara's main line. Um, I did a little post Which on all the different lines. Which is kind of where the money is, isn't oh, it? Oh, I didn't wear makeup today. Um... And that was eight pound for that, and I've got it listed for two hundred and twenty-five. And that's why I say, for example, this LRB. I I, I go back and I'm, I kind of have a chat with Bethany about it, um, but <laughs> smirk, um, but also sort of eight pounds into that for like twenty-five thirty to us, or eight pounds into the blazer mm. for Max Mara for two hundred. Yeah. You know that that's kind of how we work, especially at the moment because we was, do have quite a bit of stock. I was just showing Austin as well a uh, Sabago, um, gelé. Um, it was in awful condition, but it was only three pounds. And once again, if you threw it on Depop for fifteen to twenty, you're gonna make some. Um, you're gonna make some money. Um, unlike Austin in the soft toy section. Have always have a rummage, people. If you're not a rummager, why are you even reselling? That's what I would say. Clothes. We're reselling clothes. Yeah, but a lot of people <laughs> watching this video aren't just reselling clothes, are they? Um, but that's a Vago uh, Chalet was yeah. three pound. I don't know if I just said. Um, so it was good value. Uh, there was oh look, there's my phone. There was so much. Oh, we'll check the tags, folks. There was so much. Uh, so many niche good brands. brands. Yeah. I honestly, I couldn't. I couldn't even fathom. Like it was just con. That's that's a cool brand. That's called High and Ace. Um, Australian brand. Um, it's like it reminds me of Skims, Kim Kardashian Skims. Oh yeah. It's like a um a basic collection, but it's like high end basic. This was an Acne Studios, or not as the case may be. It was a bootleg Acne Studios, and yeah, believe it or not, they do that. Um, just terrible quality, bad label, um, the stitching, everything about it was just just was very cheap. Um, but once again, a lot of people are kind of, they see Acne Studios, think it's a very kind of contemporary, newer brand. And I think sometimes people only think things like Gucci get knocked off or, or kind of the real kind of obvious knockoff brands. Um, I have a couple of these t-shirts myself personally. So like they, it, it, when you compare it to the real thing, it's just way off. Um, there were some regular items here. They did a line of scarves recently as well, Acne Studio. They did blanket scarves and they get knocked off very heavily. Oh, the multicoloured ones. Yeah, this is a ten, ten. I can't say the brand. Say it. Ten, Tenzu? Tenery. Tenery. Oh, Tenery, sorry. Tenery, which is another Australian brand. And they're made by another Australian brand called Country Road. Um, they do what I think they had a spell in anthropology. Um, they do, You made a friend, Dales. I did. Uh, yeah, she just kept asking me questions about opening the door and how cold I was. And she just genuinely she really liked cared me. cared <laughs> about, about you. 
Um, Austin just went past. Oh, no, he's looking at it. This is Diane von Versenberg. I actually have a dress from this collection already in stock. Um, which, so if you're interested. <laughs> which hasn't sold. Um, but I think the the problem I find with Diane von Versenberg, and this is someone who, like, adores high-end, is that if it doesn't wrap, no one's interested. She's known for wraps. Wrap dresses. You know? um, if you get a wrap dress, you're going to make fantastic money. But And no one's saying it's not worth picking them up if they're cheap. They just sit around for a bit. If you're yes. one of these people that need, like, fast money all the time... And that's, that's not, not no. no that's not the one and me. also please when when we say these things about oh we didn't pick this up or you, sometimes you might think we're mad sometimes you think we're being oh, I don't know, snooty whatever it might be but there's all different reasons and variables why we don't pick these things up like you said a great one is time all these things in this shop would make money realistically all these things but it's whether how much you want to put into them for how long Austin was obsessed with this blouse I don't know why <laughs> it's a day by burger at Mickelson. Let me at it. There Is you go. it? Yeah. Day by burger at Mickelson. I really like selling this. However, the market is flooded. Yeah. It is flooded, flooded, flooded with cheap, cheap, cheap prices. And it's retail. It's bloody expensive. And once again, we've said before about people kind of maybe not doing enough research and putting them up for cheap. The problem is that in turn, that brings them a whole market down. The items are really nicely done, aren't they? Yeah, this is a hush top, sort of that burnout fabric, grey, size small or size large, I can't see from here. It was £8, £8. And I know, like, there's a lot of resellers that do really cool things with the Facebook group and, like, literally are flipping things left, right and centre. I personally don't use them. Um... I just find them, I just don't like them. And, um, but that is something that would probably sell really quickly for 25 quid or 20 quid. Um, but on eBay, it's not worth it. Yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, this back row clothes is mental. There's a Ralph, and Austin loves Ralph. I love Ralph. I always just have a look, see what it is. There was a lady's shirt, good colour combo. I think it was about £70. Um, what else are we seeing? You need to, like, angle the camera up. This was a terrible video. Also, it, it kind of looks hazy. It looks like a summer's day, which it kind of it kind of was very hot. But I think it was the fact the actual camera was, um, to be quite frank, the lens wasn't um, clean. That's disgusting. Um, Not really. This follows on from the post I did about uh, Max Mara brands. This is the Max Mara brand, um, Marlella. Marlella? Marlella? Ma Marlella? Ma 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 Marlella, yeah. Marlella. Um, and the retail of those pieces are really high. I only ever find older or vintage pieces. And the resale, I don't personally think, is there for them. Um, I've never found a modern piece of that brand, and it does my head in. Um, but I think because of because there's only real like vintage pieces out there, the resale sits quite low, I guess, for the yeah. retail value that is. Because the only thing that comes up is vintage, that's what you're saying. Yeah, I yeah. don't know if I show you what's in my hand, but I've got some good things in my hand. Am I going to show you? Possibly. Well, we've I'll seen just... that one. Yeah, that's the kind of the tie wrap you were talking about. It kind of threads to... What do you call them? Like, what are they called? Ties? Through the hole as opposed to a button? Yeah, it's really cool that it goes through there. We're trying uh, to show up. Uh, we didn't even bother. Look at us. Um, what have you got in your hand here? I've got a Equipment, which is a really cool brand. And the bloggers loved this brand a couple of years ago. Like, it was the one. Um, that's 100% silk. It's an extra small, but it's oversized. This I've is so special. I've got a... Paul Smith, uh, PS is a diffusion line. It's like C by Chloe, um, that is to Chloe. It's not a new brand or a different brand or a rebranding. It is literally the, the more ready to wear, cheaper line of Paul Smith. As opposed to just Paul Smith, which is the higher end stuff. That is a majestic filatures. Um, uh, blouse like burnout style um i have a couple of pieces of them in stock and they haven't sold yet so i thought i would give that one a um break and that's it and you will join us when we go back and rectify our mistakes perhaps mentally intentionally very very soon